Tuesday, November 13th. This is the, uh, the guest bathroom near the bedrooms in the hallway. And the floor tile is, looks like it's all done. This wasn't done yesterday, but it looks like we got this all finished. And at the door, I didn't want any trim pieces, so they, well, you really can't see in this video, but they installed a little piece of wood to raise the other wood floor up, and then these now are basically even. And then they'll sand this down, this little, they'll sand this little strip down right here, which is about a quarter of an inch above the rest of the floor. And that's what made it even with the tile. And it looks, it looks pretty good. It's like, even to the edge of this, um, where it meets in the doorway will be, uh, when the door's on, you'll see the, this on this side and this on this side. So the room will be uh, divided correctly when the door's shut. You won't see tile out in the, the hallway. And the thing I like about it is it's perfectly even here. It's always a pet peeve of mine when there's um, a distance here. And you can't always figure out what that's going to be because the, the tile and the thin set and the backer board ended up being a little bit taller than this floor, even though this floor is like an inch and a half thick. So they'll end up putting these quarter inch strips in front of every door. Um, I, I actually like the way it looks. The shower surround has been completed in here. We have these little soap boxes added. So the tall items can go here, conditioner and whatnot, and then the short ones can go here. The soap bars or things. And then this shower um, is going to have a, you know, I can't remember the name of this, but it'll be a trench drain. So there'll be like a grate right here, and the whole thing is tilted just enough so that we won't have to put a door here. We're hoping for doorless showers. So hopefully it tilts correctly and the water will run into this trench and down to that drain which will be cut in eventually. This is where the uh, concrete countertop is going to be sticking out of the wall. And what they've done is they've welded this rebar to the metal beams. The whole house is metal. There's not one, not one stitch of wood in it. So it's uh, welded to these, these metal beams and then the concrete will end up sitting on top of that and being formed around that. And with, this, with, the, with all of the concrete countertops, what we've, we've decided that they're going to run exactly even with the side of the countertop itself instead of doing an overhang. I think it's a little bit more of a, it's a little cleaner look, a little more custom and potentially it'll be a little more contemporary looking. Most of the time when it's cleaner, it is contemporary. Um, with this build, we, just as a philosophy, we tried to make um, as little trim, as little transition, as little anything covering anything up, which is evident with the showers. Like there's no shower doors, there's no trim pieces running on the bottom, um, on any of them. They're all, like I said, everything, the water is to flow into the trench and then down the drain. The doorways, we try to avoid any sort of T-moldings in any of the doorways. Certainly didn't put any trim from room to room, which is very common in North America when you're putting hardwood in. Um, the hardwood was all the, the uh, I think it's called Rhino Glue. All the edges were sealed with Rhino Glue. This glue is aggressive. And then screwed into the metal beams, every, every metal beam, at every metal beam, which I believe these run 24 inch uh, beams. And so I don't think this, this floor is going to buckle or go anywhere, no matter what the humidity or dryness is. So we left out all of the transitions on all doorways. I just don't think they're necessary. And this is a, probably about, um, in terms of continual running square feet of hardwood. This will be roughly 1,700 square feet of continual running on the first floor. And it's pretty uncommon to not stop it and put a transition for expansion and contraction. 
but I feel very confident that the way that this was put in and the fact that it's teak, which is really good with moisture, even in a solid format, I think this is going to be ideal. So we were able to avoid all trim. The other thing that, that we did, uh, and it, it kind of affected the phase of the construction here, was the sheetrock. This flooring went in first instead of the sheetrock going in first. And that is so that the floor would go all the way under the sheetrock. I didn't want any spiders coming up through any cracks or holes that might be in here. I'm just not a fan of spiders. So the sheetrock, I wanted the sheetrock in last. So the floor, they put the floor in and then they put um, the sheetrock in over the top of the floor. I also can't, I also am really picky about seeing gaps in the floor between uh, the sheetrock or doorways or anything. So, and that sometimes will happen when you cut, there'll be a little piece where you just didn't quite fit it, the cut, and then it goes around the wall and then there's this little gap and sometimes you'll see them fill it with like a, like a, a wood matching putty. I did not, did not want that. So um, that's how they did it. Even after they put the floor in, I had them go around and, and weather seal it all where the floor met the metal, where the actual hardwood floor met the metal frame, I had them put um, caulking all the way around the edges, anywhere where it touched, so that there was no way that any, any sort of bug or anything would ever come up through any sort of crack that they might have missed there. And then on top of that, they put the sheetrock down with a, with a bead of glue that, that stuck it to the floor as well. So. Um, Maybe a little anal, but uh, I'm pretty comfortable that it'll be easy to, to keep the house uh, bug free. Providing we do a good job with the seals on the doors, the exterior doors.